Okay, let's go ahead and install the Centroid software. And then once we all, I'll end up showing you the, the last part of the installation, it's going to ask you to install a PLC program. All right. To get to the Centroid uh, software, basically just open up a web browser, go to the main centroidcnc.com web page. Okay. Uh, you'll see various different options on here. Click on the Shop DIY CNC. Okay. You'll see a bunch of tabs on the left hand side. Just go to the DIY CNC support and select the CNC software downloads. Okay. The first page, or I'm sorry, the page that it takes you to is our software page. The first item is the CNC12 for our Acorn board. Uh, but as of right now, I have an all-in-one DC uh, installed in my system. So I'm going to want to make sure that I install the software that's compatible with the all-in-one DC. All I do is just scroll down, come to it, and then click on the link to be able to download that file. Okay. And once it's downloaded, I am going to open it up, unzip it, and install it. All right, so let me go ahead. Extract all. Put it. Let's put it in on my desktop. And as you can see, it's taken quite a bit of time because there's a lot of files that it's extracting. Okay. Then pretty much all we're going to end up doing is we're going to select whether we want the mill or the lay software. And then we're going to continue on with the rest of the messages. And then at the end, it's going to ask us whether or not we want to install a PLC program. Now, basically, if someone is updating, you can update the Centroid software. It's going to be the same exact process. If you are just updating just to get an updated version of software, the only difference that you'll end up doing is that you will not select a PLC program because the moment that you select the PLC program, it's going to install the default configuration and parameter files, which if you already had a system that was already configured, you're now going to overwrite them. Uh, so if you were just updating the software, you do exactly the same thing uh, that I'm doing right now. It's just that once it gets to the last question about installing the PLC program, you're just going to select no. Okay. All right, looks like it completed. So now let me go ahead. Open it up. And all you end up doing is just go ahead and click on that uh, the installer, which is the .exe. Now you'll see that there's two dot, or actually a couple of dot .exe's on here. The one to actually install the CNC software is going to be the one that's labeled Centroid-O-All-in-One-DC, CNC12, and blah blah blah. Uh, so you just double click that and let the installer do its thing. It's going to ask you a few questions. Oh. Okay, just click on I agree. And then at this point, it's going to ask you what you wish to install, whether you want to install the mill, the lathe, or if you want to install like the demo software, which is also what we call our offline intercon software. The offline intercon uh, can be used in order to program or create like intercon programs on your desktop machine and then take them off to your machine and actually cut the part. If you didn't want to actually create the parts on the machine, you can install the offline intercon software uh, on your desktop machine and create them on there. 
Uh, with all this, the you get like a think of it sort of like a free version. Uh, if you don't purchase the actual seat for offline intercon, you'll be able to use it, but you're limited to only 20 lines in the intercon program. The moment you exceed 20 lines, it's going to ask for a Sentinel key. As of right now, you can purchase a seat of offline intercon for $99. And you can download and install the software on as many PCs as you want, but only the PC that has that USB central key plugged in will you be able to create and edit uh, intercon programs that are larger than 20 lines. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead, click on nil. Yep, going to put it on the C directory. And it's going to go ahead and install all the uh, files into that C and CM directory. And of course, if I selected lathe, it's going to install everything into the CNCT directory. Click Next. Now on here, uh, because our hardware actually communicates uh, to the software via the Ethernet port, we need to make sure that the Ethernet adapter is correctly set. Um, and basically, you would select whichever Ethernet port you're using. As of right now, uh, this PC has two of them. One I'm using to connect to the outside world to get internet access and the other one I'm actually using to connect to the all-in-one DC so I'd make sure that that one is correctly set and take a few seconds and then once that's done we're done installing the software and right now it's asking would you like to install a PLC program <clears throat> excuse me and like I was saying if you were up just updating the software just to update the software at this point in time you would select no and now your software has been updated to the whatever version of software you installed. Um, if you were planning on upgrading, let's say from like a CNC 11 system, and you wanted to utilize the new features that we had that uh, contain like the wireless MPG or the virtual jog pendant, well, if you had a basic running PLC program, that basic one in those systems didn't have any logic uh, in the PLC program that would allow you to use that those features or those particular accessories. So that means that if you were updating the software just solely to use those, you'd have to make sure that you install the appropriate PLC program that had that logic. All right? And of course, if this is their first time installing the software, you always will click on yes because you have to install some PLC program because without that, your system will not be able to run. All right. So we went in, gone ahead, and clicked on all right, yes, and we're going to install it. Now, initially, you'll see that you have two trees for a mill and a lathe. You pretty much, whichever system you're going on, you're going to click on that little tree to uh, expand or contract, uh, retract it. Okay. So now, of course, like I said, I have an all-in-one DC in my system, so I'm going to make sure that I had an all-in-one DC uh, selected. But if I had, let's say I had a GPIO 4D or an Oak, I would make sure that I'd go down to the GPIO 4D uh, system, or I'd go down to the Oak and just make sure that I select which one that I have. Once I have that component selected, then it asks me all other options. Okay. First and foremost is the Centrate standard. That will end up working on 90% of the machines out there. Typically, if you don't have anything that requires anything custom, like a, a tool changer or um, certain things that might have a vacuum or dust, or let's say you've got a router, um, you can even select the Centrate standard. Now, granted, if your router had, uh, let's, for example, say that it had a rack mount tool changer, uh, at that point, that would require uh, an ATC uh, system. Uh, but let's say your rack mount had something even more custom, where it had where the, your rack had a door that would open and close, uh, depending on when it was actually performing a tool change. It might even have it to where it would have to slide that rack up. Um, I've seen some that had a linear the rack was installed on linear rails and it had an actuator that would move it out about six inches or uh, a foot or so just so it can then the tool changer would be able to go in and uh, the head can actually perform the tool change. Uh, something like that you might require uh, some custom PLC programs but at that point your best bet is to start off with your standard. Now of course if there was we do have some custom ones on here that you can end up seeing that we have created in the past. Uh, 
but the majority of it, you're probably not going to be going on these unless it was actually you had a specific machine for it. Uh, if I was going to guess, I'd probably say the, the majority of you, if you had, a, let's say, a Bridgeport Boss, because I know on the Bridgeport Bosses, like your spindle speed, it wasn't controlled via VFD, uh, but they had air-actuated solenoids that would increase the speed uh, or decrease it. And so we had to uh, customize the PLC program that would turn on the appropriate outputs depending on if you wanted your speed to increase or decrease. Uh, so there's a custom uh, PLC program for that. All right. So once we selected the one that we want to use, and of course we're going to go all in one with the standard, it'll show the SRC file that's on there. Once that's on, you just go ahead, click install, and it'll install all the appropriate files that it needs to uh, in the PLC program. Okay. And then once that's done, you have now installed the Sensoid software. Now, let's say for example you already have a PLC program, but the PLC program that you have, um, you wanted it updated. Or let's say you start off with a standard one, but now you added a tool changer into the machine, and so you want to get or install the standard PLC program um, for that tool changer. What you can do is on your uh, soft CNC12 software installer, where we clicked on the actual CNC12 installer, what we could do is go ahead and click on the PLC installer. All right, this PLC installer is basically it's going to show you the same exact thing that you saw whenever we actually clicked on the uh, yes to install a PLC program. So all you would do here is once again go down your tree and select the appropriate one that you wish to install. Uh, I've also seen some systems or some people where they started off with an all-in-one DC and unfortunately the uh, motors that they had or that they selected just didn't have enough oomph uh, to move the uh, the table. So then they switched it out to an oak system. Now, of course, they already had a PC. They built it. They installed the software, but it just had the all-in-one DC. Well, all they have to do is just go in, double-click on the PLC installer, and then select the appropriate PLC program for the component that they end up having in there. Okay, so all they do is click on whichever one they want and then click install. All right. The software will actually create a backup of that system of the PLC files and store it into this .zip file anytime it creates uh, a new file or installs new PLC programs. Now, like I said before, just be wary that whenever you install the PLC program, It'll install the default configuration and parameter files. Okay. And if you, oops, I accidentally clicked on that. So let me not do that. Because <laughs> uh, if I install the yoke, it won't work on my system because my system is actually using an all in one DC. So I meant to click on cancel. Okay. Now that PLC program or that. Uh, installer, it's looking at all the files that are in this directory, MPU PLC programs. And if you open that up, you'll see that it's going to have the same tree setup as what that uh, installer and the program was looking at. So if I go to mill, I can go to all in one DC, and lo and behold, here's Centroid Standard. All right. And inside each of those folders, you're going to have that CNCM directory. And when you open it up, those are all the files that get installed whenever you select that appropriate PLC program. Now, of course, this is the standard one, so there isn't anything custom, but let's just say when we went into the Centroid, we selected the ATC. Uh, let's say when that, we selected the umbrella. All right. And as you can see, the umbrella, this has a lot more files than the standard because these custom macros that are on there and this message file and stuff like that, this message file, uh, these are all customized or custom macros that are utilized with that particular PLC program. So whenever you go in and install that, it's going to install these custom macros uh, into that particular directory or these files, I should say. Okay. So now we've gone ahead, we installed it, and if we ever wanted to, uh, if anyone can take a look at the SRC files from there. 
Um, another thing too is if they ever wanted to, let's say they wanted to customize their own PLC program, but they had logic that's typically found um, in one of the tool changer uh, logics. So for example, I'm trying to think of something, uh, tool release, that might be perfect. Uh, typically there's a tool release uh, button on a machine um, and the majority of times in tool change uh, machines will have that button but let's say you get a standard machine that doesn't have that but you need to manually uh, insert your tool some machines actually have a tool release button uh, which the PLC program can control some systems the PLC doesn't even do that you push a button and it automatically feeds 110 into the solenoid which pulls air and it allows you to uh, clamp and unclamp your tool so, but if you wanted to, you can go in, uh, we'll actually go into the uh, source code, and we might go in and just find that logic, and just copy that logic, oops, wrong one, sorry for this, PC's going a little slow today. All right, so let's say we were on here, and like I said, we're looking for tool release logic. So we can scroll down, find tool release. We'll do a search for that. And here we go. We have the logic that's on here. So all we could do is just copy all this logic and paste it into your custom PLC program, uh, and boom. Then compile it, and now you've just easily added the functionality of a tool release switch. Okay.